Uh, yeah, I mean, how? Uh, who is responsible for breeding Bully Son? Well, if I can put this in, in the right order, uh, I have a friend, still have a friend, Mr. Jerry Clements from Punchville, Texas. I gave him a little female by the name of Spook. Um, uh, she was maybe some eight months. And in her first heat cycle, uh, he came to visit, and I had this black dog named Eli. And we looked around the yard, because I had several dogs at the time. And I don't think that was uh, Clemens' first pick, but as he walked through the yard, and the more he observed Eli, the more he liked him. Eli was a small dog, some 38 pounds, I guess. And 38 to 40. And uh, he asked me what I thought. And I said, as far as I'm concerned, the way the female was bred and the way the Eli was bred, that was good as any. So he decided to go that way. And uh, brought four pups. Do you remember if there was a stud fee or? Pardon? Was there a stud fee, or you just let him breed to the dog? Or? No, he was a friend. Uh, back in that respect, with the stud fee and the puppies, I'd be willing to say I gave more puppies away and bred more dogs for free than anybody I know of. I just told uh, kind of a yes man, I guess. What goes wrong comes wrong, and you need favors, and... And I was always thinking it would come back to me in time. In Mr. Clemens' case, it came back several times. He was good to me, good man. In that particular litter, they had <clears throat> four pups, uh, three of them black, one brindle. They had two males, two females. They had Bullis on, Eli Jr., a black female named Lady, or Mr. Pat Perry, and then a brindle one for that he called Brindy. Uh, probably Brindy was the biggest and probably had the best mouth. And then the next one would be Buddhist probably, and then Eli Julian and Lady. Who owned, who first owned Bullison? General Clemens did. In other words, he, uh, he had, he had the, the mother and raised a little, yeah. And, um, he sold that dog for four hundred dollars as a puppy. He sold them all but Brindy. He kept the Brindle female. Uh, he sold Eli Jr. to a boy by the name of Doug Knight Rider. Uh, and then Doug in turn sold him to Benny Clayton, where he uh, remained until he passed away. Now, you're talking about Bully, sir? Eli Jr. Eli Jr. Okay. okay. Uh, how, 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 how old was he when he died, as far as uh, uh, Eli I Jr.? I, I don't recall. Eli uh, Jr. died when he was 9, 10, 11? Or younger than that. Eight? eight uh, if I recall correctly, he was probably a 17 model, I think. Eli Jr.? That's, that's about when he was born, I think, somewhere at 17. Pretty damn close. Um, with, uh, what he died Clinton. from just old age or was there a kennel accident? No, he died of the results of the the event against okay. him and his son Benny Bob. Okay, okay, no, 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 I'm talking about Eli Jr. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, Eli Jr. just died of old age. How old was he? <laughs> Pretty good age, but I couldn't tell you. Over 10? No, we got the dose. Kind of confused, right? And we we'll just make it clear. But Eli Jr. died. And he, uh, let's see, let's back up. Clemens sold him to Doug Knight Rider, and the price was 400. And then Doug had him hooked up against uh, Ken Allen, and Benny Clayton bought him before the contest. And Eli Jr. was 17 months old at the time. He came off real good in that event. And Benny didn't do anything with him after that besides bred him a very few times. 
a very selective female. Uh, Billy wasn't into breeding him out of his yard. I guess I'm trying to figure how did uh, how did Maurice get Bully Son on his yard? Uh, let's see, pardon me, if I can tell you about that, I don't know for sure. Uh, I would say probably, and don't quote me on this because it may not be accurate, I think he either sold him to Red Walling with a banker or to Bobby Hall, one or the other. Now Bobby's the one who did all the work. I'm trying to figure out if this is Red Wallen. See the bottom picture? I've never seen a picture of Red Wallen. I'm trying to figure out who that person is. That's what bullies him. Yeah, that could very well be. I don't, uh, and I don't say that would be Red because Red was a young man. Yeah, Mr. Wallen was a young fellow. And my eyes are too poor, I couldn't tell you. That. Is he still alive today? I would think so. He wasn't much of a dog man at the time, though. Not at all. He was just a damn dog. It was just an investment. Okay. I, I've always wondered that. That I can't answer. I don't know. Okay. Because, I mean, Red Walling registered him. Yes. But, but he already had a name. Yeah. So, okay. So. Uh, and I don't know if he went from Clemens to Bobby Hall and Bobby sold him to uh, Red Walling. I don't think Red Wallen bought him from uh, Clemens, I wouldn't think. That I'm not sure. Bob, Bobby claims in his book that he did, he sold it to him. To, or okay, he sold well, a portion of him to him. Well, that would be accurate. Okay. Uh, I was looking for everywhere in all my old magazines, my books. I wanted to find a picture of you and Bully Son so you could sign it. But I, I can't find a picture of you and Bully Son. So. <laughs> I kept Bully Son. I kept all of them with Brandy. I didn't have Brandy on my place, but I kept all the rest at one time or another. I kept Bully Son a good while. In his younger years, that's so... How, how long would you say, for periods at a time, or he came to your yard one time? And then no, I just, he came to me at, a, at an early age, uh, and I kept him... Before uh, he made a name for himself? Pardon? Before he made a name for himself? Yes, before. Yes. He was on your yard, did, did you did you breed to Bully Son while he was no. on your yard? I didn't have to. I had his dad, and that's how I run my business. I breed to what brings the good ones. Okay. Um, Bully son was be was have said to have been bitten by a snake. Two things happened to that dog. One was he got bit by a rattlesnake. Here's a picture where they claimed he was. That's more recent. Bully mm -hmm. was claimed he was he was bit by a snake, and mm -hmm. he was. That's. Uh, that is a fact? Yep. That, that's a good picture of Maurice and a good picture of Pat. Pat with bullies him, yeah. Yep. Uh, and then <clears throat> after this snake bite, he got into uh, an accident through the uh, chain link fence and receded all his guns. While on Maurice's yard? On Maurice's yard, yes. And. Maurice told Red Walling that the dog wasn't fit to be uh, in that particular contest. And Red said, bring him regardless. And that's Red's exact words. And what Carver did, uh, Mr. Jerry Clemens, which was a lab technician at the hospital, checked uh, Morrison's blood count and the dog was anemic. The blood count was 33, and it should be 46. You know that for a fact? To be true, yes. I set my reputation on it. It did happen. Okay. Mr. Clemens is very well alive today. Now, now, who's the one that says that he they fought through the chain link fence? Because if you look at his yard and all that, or pictures, or he didn't have any chain link on his fence. So I'm trying to figure that's, out where that came in from. That's what Corp said. You know, he had him in a... a now, Carver had a, 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 now I don't know how many kennels he had, but where he kept his pups was a big old chain link. Oh. Okay. Now, when you say chain link, it's like a hurricane wire. 
I got here's a picture of his one of his dogs on his yard, and just to show you what you saw the same like that, not actually chain link, but something. Well, like that. let's just still. Uh, Maybe I'll stand corrected. I'm just telling you like you told it to me. No. Well, I'm just saying while you were on his yard, is that what you seen or did you see chain link for yourself? I saw this. Because I never I saw, saw chain link. I saw where the puppies were and I thought it was a chain link uh, pin. Uh, okay. Of course, you know what it is. <clears throat> Let's just say in between the time, things will change. The man could have very well dismantled that. And right, and upgraded it. Well, see, I, I, I do. I, I research things, and I try. Since there's a lot of rumors, and there's a lot of you don't know what to believe. So, if you do some investigation work in certain things, you, some some stuff will fall apart right away. Mm -hmm. And other stuff, I try to find out. You know, because it's very well true. You know, things happen and change and yeah. stuff like that. Well, so you move the pen. So I always look for pictures. I'm always interested in finding pictures of Maurice Carver's well, yard. Yeah, and I try to see certain things that were in back there in our thing. I've never seen any actual chain link. I've seen like what I just showed you, that mm -hmm. that type of panels and stuff. Well, like that's that. probably just one pen, or just just partial of the yard. Okay, I have his puppy pens on, on that on that video. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mayfield went on his yard mm -hmm. and took an eight millimeter camera and ran it on his yard, mm -hmm. and and we have that. So I mean, I want you to well, see. Maybe we stand corrected about the chain link. It might have been just two by four wall. Okay. Okay. But now the part with the uh, uh, with the gun being received, they were. Okay. How how hot was it really that day? They claimed that 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 day of the convention it was a it was a hot day. A little a little better than warm. Okay. Yeah, it was hot. If you had to guess, what were the temperatures? I'm hearing 100. I would say that. I would say 100. Better well, pretty close. Okay. Give me a second degree or two. Right. Okay. All right.